guys. Let's give it, yes, we're live. Hello. Really sorry about the delay, everybody. I um, had some tech issues. <laughs> the joys of trying to be an internet yogi, clearly. <laughs> but how are you guys today? Um, good to see everybody online on Instagram already. Welcome, welcome. And I'm sure we get some people joining us on YouTube before long. But yeah, I hope everybody is doing okay. And as I said yesterday, like these are my cats joining me as well. Um, <laughs> again, great. Um, yeah, these are maybe slightly different times to what we used to. These are times that perhaps we haven't really had time chance to prepare for. But I still really believe that we can kind of just make peace and be here and be okay, even in this rather surreal time. So today we're going to be talking about kind of finding peace physically, trying to find a sense of calm physically. So yesterday I talked a little bit about kind of simple ways on how to kind of calm down through our mind, how to make some peace mentally. Um, and just to give you a recap, it was just things like trying to find a sense of knowing what we can control, knowing what we can't control. We can control what's going on here, even if we can't control what's going on around us. Um, oh my goodness. Sorry, my cats are being here again. <laughs> Tail. Um, yeah, so even though we may not be able to control what's going on around us, we can always control our thoughts and our feelings, as hard as that can sometimes be. And I also find more relevant to what we're going to talk about today that if we are experiencing anxiety, if we are experiencing fear or stress or overwhelm, it can really show up physically and not just mentally. Um, I tend to find for me, like if I am going through periods of stress or overwhelm, that first I notice my mind, like my thoughts going a bit like blah, 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 really fast. And then like maybe low seem like circling thoughts, recurring kind of anxieties, things like that. And then I notice it in my body. So some people, it can be the other way around. <laughs> For a lot of us, it can, we can notice the physical symptoms before we even notice the mental. Um, and these physical symptoms can appear in so many different ways. We can, oh, we can even like, we can get like, I know for me at the moment, as I was saying yesterday, a few days ago, I was getting a lot of kind of tightness around my chest. I was finding it quite hard to take deep breaths. And that was a sign for me just to really double focus on my practices. Um, breathing, simple as that. Moving, reading, relaxing, resting. Um, and these are things we're going to be talking about today. But we can also notice a lot of different symptoms. I know a lot of people get tightness around their throat as well. Sometimes we get upset stomach, sometimes we feel sick or we get kind of butterflies. Other times we make you feel really fatigued or amped up, unable to sleep. The list goes on because yeah, they can really manifest in so many different ways. And it's a really big sign that our body is just saying like, hey, listen up, you need to slow down, you need to look after yourself because I'm trying to give you these warning signs. Just to remind you, calm down, it's gonna be okay. And it's a really big reminder, and I think for all of us, just to really double focus and make, make extra hard at our um, practices, um, whatever they may be. And if you don't feel like you have many self-care practices, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to be teaching you guys loads over the next however long. <laughs> um, so I just want you to think for a moment, like notice, maybe do a little body scan for a quick check-in see how you're feeling physically. Again, maybe you're feeling tightness around your chest or you're on your throat. Maybe you've got tension through your shoulders or your jaw. Maybe you've got a headache. Maybe you feel tired. Maybe you feel really wired. It can be different for every one of us. And whatever you're experiencing, I want you to know that is okay. This is a unprecedented time. This is a very unusual time for all of us. And having a kind of fear or anxious response is understandable. But that doesn't mean that it isn't changeable, it isn't solvable. So today, we're going to do quite a bit of breathing and quite a bit of movement. But I'm hoping that this movement is going to 
kind of be really healing and therapeutic. We're not really going for like full intensity power <laughs> yoga right now. We're kind of thinking about just coming home to ourselves and literally just remind our bodies that we're taking care of us. We're taking care of our body. We're taking care of ourselves. And that it's going to be okay. So let me know, guys, if you want to share. Like, I would love to hear from you guys. Like, how are you feeling physically right now? Because, as I say, like mental kind of struggles, mental stress, whatever's going on, it can really have a physical impact. And I'd love to know what's going on for you guys, so I can kind of serve you the best in terms of how we move and how we breathe. So, if anybody wants to share in the comments, please do so. Please speak up. No need to be shy. We're creating this beautiful community right here where we're all going to support each other. So I'd love, again, to hear from you guys. Just let me know after checking in with yourself. See what's going on for you physically. Maybe you're feeling okay. Maybe you're feeling any of the symptoms I mentioned before, fatigue, tightness, tension, kind of feeling stuck or, or wired or anything. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it, Shahid. You too. We're glad you're feeling more relaxed today. Yeah, and here you're feeling neck ache and headache peaks flint. Yeah, right. <laughs> and yeah, I see my studio co-owner in the real time, real normal life. Point of glasses, Rachel, mentally running around at a million miles an hour. Yeah, totally. Because yeah, we are so like that <laughs> in our minds, right? We tend to just end up running around a million miles an hour because our thoughts are going so fast. We're just wanting to do all the things physically as well because then we feel, okay, I can distract myself and carry on. I can do all the things. Jen, wired and tired of sitting. <laughs> Second guessing every sneeze. Yeah. Again, I hear that. So men, wired and tired. <laughs> and that is such a kind of, phenomenon of like modern times I think when we're just like we may feel physically really fatigued really tired mentally maybe even tired but our thoughts keep going our thoughts keep worrying and we're just constantly buzzing and keeping ourselves on high alert that's a really kind of big symptom of stress of overwhelm of anxiety so yeah so if we're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, I've got to do other things, I'm just feeling really wired, again, that can be a symptom, that, a, sorry, a sign <laughs> that we need to slow down to. Talking to you too there, Sparrow, honestly. <laughs> Normally when I'm on my mat, they don't want to know, but as soon as the camera's out, they just get super involved. I would shut them out, and I may have to do that in the future, but <laughs> right now I know that they're food, they're water, they're literary, everything's down here, so... We're stuck with running around cats for the moment. <laughs> so just as we did yesterday, I just want us all to do a quick tuning in exercise. So we need to get really comfortable if you're sitting at your desk, if you're sitting on the sofa, if you're lying down in bed or anything else. I'm gonna come a little bit further back so I can be towards my mat. Um, yeah, I just want you to get really comfortable in whatever position you are in. Take a few slow, steady breaths. Before we even close down our eyes, I actually want you to keep them open for a moment or two longer. I just want you to notice what you can see without moving the shift of your gaze. So noticing what you're seeing right in front of you, dead center. But also seeing what you're seeing on the kind of periphery of your vision again without moving your eyes. Noticing what's just to the left. And what's just to the right. Notice the small amount you can see maybe just above. and what you can see below. And then getting a little bit more connected, listening to the sounds around you. Maybe it's the sound of my voice. Maybe it's sounds coming from outside of your building, wherever you are right now, your home, your flat, your office. And see if you can just hear 
what is going on without straining to listen, without effort. Whenever you feel ready, go ahead and close down your eyes. Or if you prefer, you can just keep your gaze soft and downwards. So you're not looking at anything in particular. If it feels better for you to keep your eyes open. Turn your attention deeper. Going from the sounds you can hear outside of your room, wherever you are, and noticing instead the sounds you can hear within the room. Even if it's my voice coming from the speaker. Tune into your thoughts just for a moment without trying to control them, without trying to change them. Just listen to what's going on in your mind with all of the compassion, all of the love, all of the care. As though you're listening to your best friend kind of confiding in you. There's no judgment here, there's no need for criticism. Just hold a bit of space for your thoughts. And if they are going at about a thousand miles an hour, that is okay. This is our opportunity to come back to ourselves. And can you drop your attention deeper? Can you notice what's going on for you through your face? Same exercise as yes, I would do a brief body scan. And you can feel the crown of your head join a little bit up towards the sky. And can you smooth away tension from your forehead, your eyes, your jaw? Can you release the heaviness from your well, the tension from your shoulders, and even just let them get heavy? It feels good to do a few shoulder rolls. You can bring your shoulders up, back, and down a few times. Just allow this gentle movement to help you find a sense of ease. Even if it's just a little bit more ease, that is okay. And from there, bring your attention towards the space around your heart, the chest, where we can. Sometimes feel a little bit trapped, a little bit stuck or tense or tight. And as all of us for a moment, whether you're experiencing those symptoms or not, let's place both hands on top of our heart, the left side of our chest. And so we need to breathe into your hands. Just notice whether your breath is short, slow, shallow, deep. Again, just noticing this as if you were noticing or listening to your best friend confiding in you. Sometimes it is more than okay to remind ourselves that it's going to be okay. You can repeat that to yourself if you feel like that would help you. And then bring your attention further down noticing the abdomen, your hips, your sit bones. You can allow your sit bones to just really almost like that wall, relaxing through your hips and the back of your pelvis. Can you just feel, if you're seated, the sit bones, your sit bones connecting to the mat, to the earth, to the floor, to the chair. Can you just breathe? If your mind is calm, if your mind is chatty, it's okay. We're not trying to attach labels of good or bad to any of this. We're just acknowledging our experience and trusting that we're doing what we can to survive in this moment. But there's also more we can do so we can actually relax too. 
And remind yourself that's exactly what we're going to be doing through this whole of this live stream. Release one hand down so it's just in your belly, just below your navel, your belly button. Let's take a few breaths now into the belly. And this can be really challenging if you're feeling a bit stressed. But I invite you to see if you can bring the hand on your belly to move. A little bit more than the hand on your chest. So we're not necessarily moving our hands. But we're rather allowing the movement of our breath to move our hands. So really breathing in and out through the belly. So breathing in, feel your belly expand, almost inflating up towards your hands. And as you breathe out, draw your navel slightly in towards your spine, kind of deflating through your abdomen. For your hand draw in as your belly draws in. It's gonna take five breaths like that. One. That's two. Real breath doesn't match mine, that is more than okay. See if you can slow down even more. Each breath longer than the last. Five. Let's take a few breaths in any way that feels good for you. I'm not trying to force anything. And whether that means you're going back to breathing more from the chest. Again, that's okay right now. It is okay. We'll do a little bit more breathing work later. I'll show you some great breathing techniques that are great just to help us kind of de-stress and find calm. With your eyes still closed, your gaze down towards the earth. Now I want you to place one hand on your forehead, just kind of lengthways across the forehead. So your heel of your palm is on one side of your temple. Your fingertips are on the other. The other hand is still on your heart. If you'd feel more comfortable switching your hands around, then you're welcome to do that. So the hand on our heart is reminding ourselves to come back to our body. And the hand on your forehead is the one that's connecting us to our intuition. Our truest selves, our highest selves. And the one that kind of resides behind all these layers of uncertainty and all these things that we're feeling right now. Our higher self is just so powerful. He or she or they are so calm, grounded. And they know exactly what we need to do. Even when we don't kind of on the surface layer know, our deepest, our highest selves always do. So just here is what you to breathe and just tune into yourself. The hand on your heart, again, helps us connect our body. So notice kind of what your body needs right now. Maybe it's a slow down. Maybe it's to rest, maybe it's to move. The hand on our forehead, again, just helps us tap into our intuition. And as we sit here right now, I want you to ask yourself, what, do, what does my body need in this moment? And what can I do to help serve that need? Again, maybe it's to rest, maybe it's to move. 
Maybe it's to lie down for an hour. Maybe it's to dance. <laughs> Whatever, again, feels intuitive for you. I'm trying to go a little bit deeper and ask yourself, what do I need to do today to help me feel my best? Just come up with maybe one, maybe two, maybe even three things, but try not to overwhelm yourself with too many things. So what do I need to help me feel my best today? And when you feel ready, bring your palms to touch in front of your heart, so your hands are at pr in prayer. Thumbs connect to your sternum, your breastbone. Just remember to lift your sternum to meet your thumb. So lifting up to the chest a little. And give yourself thanks for showing up. Give yourself thanks for being here. And give yourself thanks for doing all that you can do to get through whatever we need to get through in this time. So we're not just surviving, but we're also taking really good care of ourselves and helping nurture ourselves. You can bow your head down towards your hands, towards your heart for a minute. Just feel gratitude for just a moment, honouring yourself and all the people in your life who are just helping you, helping themselves, doing the best that they can. Slowly bring your, lift up your chin. Relax your arms down, you can blink open your eyes when you feel ready. Hi. <laughs> I recommend if you have a piece of paper, a notebook or anything around with you, then I really invite you to just write down those things that came up for you, what you feel like you need to help you feel your best today. Again, it could be one, two, maybe even three things. So try not to overwhelm yourself. <sighs> Sometimes we literally need to remind ourselves verbally, externally, vocally, that it's going to be okay, that we're going to be okay. It sounds silly sometimes to talk to ourselves, although if you just, maybe it's just me, but I think it's a sign of genius. <laughs> um, and I think it's really super important just to give ourselves opportunity to just remind ourselves we're doing okay, it's going to be okay, we're doing the best that we can. So I'm just going to check in with you guys, just check in with the comments, see how everyone's doing. Yes, absolutely. We would definitely have a short meditation like that every single day. I actually intend to start our prac our every single every single live feed. I actually want to start with that. Just this really simple tuning in exercise, connecting with our breath, connecting with ourselves. That's exactly what I want to start every one of these life these with. So yes, <laughs> we will definitely be having a short meditation like that every day. And it is more than possible. <laughs> We're definitely going to do that. How's everybody doing? I'd love to hear if anything came up for anybody. If there's anything I could do to support you guys. How you feel after just that really simple, yeah, you feel good. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yay. Sometimes what we need can sometimes be the simplest things, right? Just taking a moment to pause, to tap into ourselves, to say, hey, I'm here. I'm doing the best I can. I'm looking after myself. It's all going to be okay. Literally right now, I think we all need to be treating ourselves almost the way we treat a child, right? Like just be really reassuring, be loving. Karma, yes, amazing, amazing, good stuff, guys. I'm really happy to hear all of your responses. Thank you. And yeah, just, just giving ourselves space to just reassure ourselves, to be kind to ourselves. And yeah, just to say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Lindsay, yeah, great to hear. See <laughs> you joining, that's great. Ah, so we breathe a little bit, we slow down a little bit. 
now we're going to move a bit. <laughs> um, what I'm going to invite everybody to grab. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't worry. She get her to join in. She can sit down and enjoy some of this stillness, some of this calm as well. Do you not know if your wife is interrupting you? <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we're going to move a little bit, if possible. And again, it it doesn't matter if you don't have access to anything like this. But if possible, I'd recommend you either grab a yoga mat, um, whether that is, you don't necessarily need a mat, to be honest. Like if you have carpet in your house, that's fine. If you have wooden floors, then you may want to have a cushion just to support our knees when we need. You should just need one cushion. But I know that sometimes wooden floors can be a little bit unforgiving for our knees. So, yeah. So if you have a mat, cool. If you don't, cool. If you have carpet, fine. If you have a wooden floor, maybe grab a cushion or a pillow or a sofa cushion, anything that you need. Another thing, again, if you've got it, we may want a couple of blocks. So I just simply have, well, I've got so many blocks, but they're all locked away in my studio <laughs> in town. I'm not in town. So I luckily have two blocks at home. And if you don't have any blocks, don't worry. Grab some books. Get creative. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that should be all that we're going to need today. So, again, if you've got wooden floors, grab a cushion. And you may want a cushion anyway because sometimes – I mean, I've got quite knobbly knees. I often find that um, I sometimes need a cushion to support my back knee in some poses. So if you feel like that might be you too, yeah, join the knobbly knee crew <laughs> and grab a cushion. And yeah, blocks or bricks or books, stack of magazines, anything. And we're just going to get started. I'm going to be a little bit further back. Hopefully, yes, my head isn't cut off. This is amazing. <laughs> Ah, oh, I found the perfect setup. I'm just never going to be able to move any furniture again. So, <laughs> it's fine by me. Um, right. So, just coming to a comfortable seat on your mat. Can be cross-legged, can be kneeling. I'm actually going to start kneeling. If kneeling feels good for you, you're welcome to kneel too. That doesn't feel too great for your knees or your legs or your hips. Just stand up on your knees like this. I want you to be comfortable wherever we are. Just because we're going to start our movement practice with actually a little bit of stillness. <laughs> so we're going to do just a little bit more breathing. And we're going to, do, going to practice something a little bit different now. Actually, going to forget you to bring your backs of your hands, so not your palms, but the backs of your hands, to the outsides of your rib cage or to your sides. I want you to find a space that feels comfortable for you. So if your elbows feel a bit um, wingy, wingy now to the side, you're welcome to just let them draw in, anything that you feel like you need. And again, find a space where you can either close down your eyes. I'm actually going to bring my palms. I'm going to mix this up a little bit. I'm going to bring my palms onto my ribs. So again, just the outside of our waist, kind of in between our chest and our belly button, kind of the outsides of our body. Um, so just do what feels good for you. There's no right or wrong with this. Find a space you can kind of connect to your side body and we can maybe fill your ribs. And then you can close down your eyes. Or gaze down towards the earth if that feels better. I'm going to do some really expansive breathing through our side ribs. This can be sometimes a lot easier for us if we are feeling quite stressed. Sometimes it can be hard to take diaphragmatic breaths so through the belly. But this exercise we're about to move into is actually a really accessible, even if we are finding it quite hard to take deep breaths. So we're just going to breathe in and out with our hands where they are. As you breathe in, I want you to draw your kind of wide and expand width ways. So as you breathe in, I want your ribs to expand laterally, so out to either side. And push it into your hands. And as you breathe out, draw your, almost draw your ribs in towards the midline. So I'm going to engage the core a little bit as we do this. So just to, to be a little bit confused by what I mean, as you breathe in, 
I want you to expand outwards. And as you breathe out, I want you to expand inwards, so contract. <laughs> that would make more sense. So breathing in, slowly expanding your rib cage out to either side. And every time you breathe out, feel your rib cage, your waist narrow, your waist narrow. Maybe your fingertips come towards each other. So inhale and expand outwards. Exhale, contract inwards. And take five breaths, just on your own this time. I'm not going to count. Just breathe in at your own pace. In your own time. Let's see how it feels maybe to slow down the flow of your breath. So we're taking deep breaths. It might just take a few moments to fill up completely as we slow the rate of our breath. Let's take maybe two more breaths just here. The rest of your hands on your lap. Again, just gently open up through the eyes if you're ready. So I hope that if you struggle a little bit with the belly breaths, then that is a really great alternative just to help us kind of deepen the breath, but without kind of sometimes belly breaths, I find can be again challenging if we're feeling overwhelmed. So I hope that helps. We need to make our way now into tabletop, so hands and knees on the mat, on the floor, wherever you are. For those of you who come to my new classes a lot, you'll know that I love to find a good kind of stable alignment, a solid foundation in this place. So, and those of you who are perhaps new to yoga, this is going to be a great time for you to kind of to learn. <laughs> so we're going to spread our fingers as wide as we can. To a point where we feel comfortable and kind of stable and strong through our hands. Our hands are really grounded. Then from there, can you make sure that your wrist creases are more or less facing forwards towards the top of the mat or right in front of you, wherever you are. Shoulders above your wrists. And then your knees more or less beneath your hips. So we're kind of in this really steady kind of all fours grounded position. We're going to move this in cat-cow breath just to get moving through the heart space, through the spine as well. So we're going to move through these really slowly. As you inhale, slowly tilt the tailbone up towards the sky. Draw the belly down, so arch into the back. Lift up the chest and look up. So we're really having a really nice back in here. And as you breathe out, bring your chin towards your chest. Slow as you can be into your shoulder blades away from each other, pull your belly in towards your spine, rounding through your back and tucking your tailbone towards the floor. So now we're in more of a spinal flexion, we're really rounding through the back. So sometimes in yoga class, I just won't move through these really fast, but I actually want us to move quite slowly through these so we get really mindful and really present. So inhaling, every time we breathe in, slowly lead with the tailbone, lift it up, belly draws down. Chest lift your heart through the gateway of your arms. Look up. Exhale, bring your chin to your chest. Round through your spine. Belly pulls in, tuck your tail in. Let's do three more of those. Just move in your time. You don't necessarily have to move in the pace of my breath. Just move in a way that feels good for you. So as you breathe in, palpose or lift up. And as we breathe out, Cat pose, round in. Breathing in. Breathing out. Inhale. And exhale. One more thing. <laughs> Breathe in, cow, lift the heart, lift the tailbone. Breathing out, slowly round, cat. 
And then from there, like I said, we're going to move a little bit more than we did yesterday. And I think it'll actually help for us to grab our blicks, our <laughs> bricks, our blocks, our pack of, pack of books or magazines, anything that we've got, and just bring them kind of to the front two corners of your mat. So once you've kind of got that organized, making your way back to tabletop, you're going to breathe in, extend your right leg back behind you. So you're going to lift the right foot off the mat straight on the right leg. Find a really long line from your right heel to the crown of your head. Good, pause here, breathe in. And as you breathe out, bring your right knee in towards your nose. The whole leg will be lifted if you can. Now we need to push your hands into the mat. Imagine trying to push the earth away from you. Round through your spine like we would in cat pose. Only this time our right knee is in towards our chest, our right leg is lifted. Inhaling again, extend it back. And exhale, draw it in, round. One more time, inhale. And this time as you breathe out, we're going to bring that right knee in again. You can lift up to your right fingers, you can lift that right hand completely and stack that right foot kind of in between your hands or towards the top of your mat. This may be where we want the two blocks, or bricks, or magazines, or books. <laughs> and we're just going to keep them kind of about shoulder width, so um, your hands can find the blocks, but maybe your hands can be about shoulder width, just either side of that right foot. Breathe in and get light to your right fingertips, and look up. I'm gonna pause right here. So all your fingertips are just on the blocks, you're welcome to adjust them to whatever height you might need. And then just wait to sink through the hips, if that feels okay for your lower back. So imagining that the front of your left leg, your back leg, is kind of drawing front forwards and down. Lift up through the chest, breathe in. And then relax your shoulders as you breathe out. Inhale, sweep your arms all the way up towards the sky, Angelia. And exhale, bring your hands back down to the block. Going to get moving a little bit to the back kind of the leg now. So we're going to straighten that right leg. Your hips will draw back slightly, but I want your hips to still be lifted. I mean, they're not onto your back foot. I want you to keep your hips lifted. I'm going to lift up your right toes and draw them in towards you. Can you all kind of see me okay here? I think so, but I can't really, yeah, <laughs> the way my foot didn't see on the screen. A bit too far away to be able to tell, so I'm going to go with. Yes. <laughs> so you can move the blocks or bricks or whatever you've got back if you need, especially if it's feeling really tight through the back of that right leg. And please know as well that if I say straighten, and straighten for you feels like impossible, like completely inaccessible, that is okay as well. It's way to kind of draw the hips back as much as you can until you get a stretch to the back of that right leg. We're not going to pause in this pose too long because, yeah, can be quite intense. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to move in and out of this pose, back to the lunge. As you breathe in, we're going to bend that right knee, place the right foot back down, lift the chest. And as you breathe out, we're going to straighten that right leg, lift the right toes to the towards you. Inhaling then. And exhaling, straighten. One more time, breathe in. We'll look up, lift the heart. We'll breathe out, straighten the right leg. Inhale, bend the right knee. And keep your hands on the blocks, to be honest, or whatever you've got. And we're gonna step that right knee back. So coming back to tabletop, your hands can stay on the blocks so your version's on. Now let's move the blocks out to either side, finding tabletop. Just resetting to the back body, we'll do three rounds of cat cow breath. So breathing in, tailbone lifts, belly drops, lift the heart. And breathing out, slowly round through the spine. Inhaling, lift up. And exhaling, round. One more time. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
straight and left leg back behind you, lift the left foot. The whole left leg is lifted. Good, again, create a long line of energy from your left heel to the crown of your head. Pause here, inhale. Exhale, bring your knees towards your nose. Again, we're going to round through the spine, push your hands into the mat, draw your shoulder blades away from each other as you bring that left knee all the way in. Extend it back, inhale. Draw it in, breathe out. One more time, inhale, extend it back. And this time, as you breathe out, step that left foot in between your hands. Again, use, lift up your left hand as much as you need to do that. It's a nice long stance. It's best, comfortable as possible, grab the blocks. Find your fingertips in the blocks again, use to whatever heights you need, whatever is available for you. And then, if it feels okay to your lower back once more, just relax, sink through the hips. Lift up through the heart, so you're rolling your shoulders back, heart lifts up and forwards. And can you just sense, find a sense of ease through your lower body? So just relaxing the legs, the feet, the hips. Find your breath, inhale. And exhale. Reach your arms to the sky, breathe in, Anjana Asana. And breathe out, bring your hands down to the blocks. <laughs> Inhale, so keeping your fingertips on the blocks, look up. And as you breathe out, straighten that left leg half split. Inhale, bend the left knee, lift the chest, look up. And exhale, straighten the left leg, lift your left toes and draw them in towards you. Again, straight does not have to actually mean straight. <laughs> Inhale, lift, bend and lift. Exhale, straighten and bow. Inhaling, re-bend the left knee. Use the blocks again if you need. We're just going to step that left leg back to meet the ring. It's just really simple poses, but I teach quite a lot because they may be simple, but they can be quite powerful. I think when our body gets kind of, when we feel this kind of somatic, this physical level of like stress, overwhelm, whatever, then kind of getting the energy moving, getting the body moving can actually help to unblock some of that. I've done a little bit of work to the legs just there, through the hips a little bit too. And we've done a bit of work for the spine. We're also going to start to think about the front body because, again, I know so many of us get tension through the chest, through the throat, through the jaw. We're going to release that in a moment. For now, in tabletop, let's find a slightly longer tabletop. <laughs> so our shoulders can stay above our wrists, but we're kind of in a plank on our knees. So our knees will be further back. I'm going to move back. I was going to face plant the super. And so I need to be further back than the hips. Engage your core, draw your lower abs in towards each other, breathe in. And as you breathe out, slow as you can with control, bend into your elbows to lower all the way down to your stomach, to your forehead. So you're lying face down on the mat. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, press down into the tops of your feet so your toes will stay untucked. And the more you want to think about is lifting up the head and the chest. So, Unless you're super warmed up and pretty advanced, I don't invite us to come all the way up into a high cobra just yet. We're not thinking about straightening our elbows by any stretch in this moment. So what is I think instead about keeping our elbows joined in, so broadening across our collarbones, keeping our chest open. And then can you use your hands and always imagine trying to drag your hands back, keeping them pressed down on the floor, but as you do that kind of dragging action, you feel your heart, your chest, or through the gateway of your arms again. Pause for breath in. Slowly as you can, lower all the way back down. Inhale, moving with the breath, lift the head, lift the chest, drag your hands back, draw your heart through. And exhale, slowly release. One more time, inhale. And exhale, slowly lower that down. 
tuck your toes under behind you. We're going to move to downward facing dog. So if you're newer to yoga, this pose may be new to you. And if you have an established yoga practice, you can move into down dog as and when you're ready. But all of us are going to think about lifting up. So you can use the knees to help lift up so until we get to this point where our hips are up towards the ceiling. And then from there, can we just bend to both knees for a moment? And think about drawing your chest towards your thighs. So think about opening up to the shoulder area here, so the space in between our shoulder blades especially. Lift the hip creases a little bit higher, lift your sit bones. And then maybe if it feels good, you can start to straighten both legs. Again, straight does not have to mean straight. For a moment, let's all bend our left knee and draw our right heel downwards. And then exhale the other side, bend into your right knee and draw your left heel down. Keep moving like this with the breath. Just really slow, simple movements keep us moving. <laughs> Let's slowly straighten both legs, lift up to your toes. And then exhale, relax, join the heels southwards. Again, do not worry if they don't come all the way down. Look forward, breathe in, find the tips of your toes. And exhale, bend your knees as slowly as you can. Walk your feet all the way towards the top of the mat, towards your hands. We're finally the halfway lift. So just like we did yesterday, we're going to bring our hands, our fingertips to our shins. We're going to think about a really long, active back body. So a lot of us in the halfway lift, we're kind of round through our shoulders, chin to chest, and what's the opposite? So. What we're really trying to achieve here is drawing our collarbones and kind of our heads forwards and drawing our tailbone back. So we've got a really long, flat back. <laughs> Pause here, inhale. And exhale forward, fold, bend into your knees if you need. I always do in the morning. <laughs> Inhale and slowly roll all the way to standing. Arms down by our sides, roll shoulders up, back. Down when you get there. Interlace your fingers behind your back. So our arms will stay straight. You can interlace your fingers, just bringing them in. And then from there, it's going to roll the shoulders open. So roll your shoulders back. See how it feels from there to lift up the chest. When I was getting a lot of kind of, kind of physical symptoms of overwhelm to my heart space, like I was telling you about earlier. All I wanted to do was back then <laughs> because I knew that that was just going to, what's going to open me up through the front line of the upper body. So literally all my practice was just like bridge pose, wheel pose, all of the back limbs possible. But this in itself can just be a really simple one. So inhaling, lift the chest up and forward a little bit more. And exhale slowly. Start to bend into your knees, lift your arms up and over. So move to a forward fold. But keeping your fingers interlaced. So your fingers are moving away from your back and lifting up. It's moving as far as feels comfortable. Keep softness to your knees. Breathing, you're actually opening the front of the shoulders to the pecs. Pause here for an inhale. And exhale, slowly bend deep into your knees where your fingertips have traced the earth. Keep a bend to your knees up on chair pose. So hips are down the back. Then you'll lift up through the arms. If that feels too much for your shoulders, just keep your hands at your heart. So thinking about a squat. The feet can stay about hip width just for today. Dropping your hips down the back rather than knees forwards. I mean to think hips back, like you sit in the chair behind you. Again, arms can be lifted or hands can be at your heart. Breathe in right here, the fiery pose. And exhale, interlace your fingers behind your back, forward fold. So again, lifting your arms up and away from your lower back and your fingers interlaced. Gonna change, move between these two poses. So inhale, bend your knees, release your grip on your hands, slowly reach your arms up or hands to your heart, chair pose. And exhale, slowly straighten ish your legs, bring your arms up and back. Chest expansion, insulating your fingers. You're with me one more time. Inhale, chair pose, bend your knees, sink your hips down. 
And exhale, chest expansion forward. Oh, so trace the earth through your hands from the back behind you and take your fingers, lift them up. Inhaling, chair pose, one last time. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart, straighten your legs. So creating maybe a little bit of fire there, maybe through the shoulders, probably definitely through the quads, maybe through the glutes and through the backs of the hips. So let's take a moment, just notice how you feel. Check in with yourself. You can roll your shoulders, you can have a little bit of a move, have a bit of a boogie on the mat. Just noticing if you feel any less stuck. Maybe feel a little bit warmer. <laughs> Maybe you're breathing a little bit more freely. Just checking in with yourself and just seeing how you are doing. Great. <laughs> I'm, we're going to make our way to seated from here. If you feel super compelled to, you welcome to move through a vinyasa. If you prefer, you can join me and just make your way to kneeling, to sitting down, to standing on your knees, to lie down if that feels better for you. Just find a seat that feels really comfortable, whatever that might be. Just notice the breath. <laughs> Maybe you're breathing a little bit faster, a little bit deeper. And I certainly am after moving and talking at the same time. without trying to find too much stillness, if that doesn't feel good for you. Just check in with yourself. Again, you can roll your shoulders, you can roll out to the neck, you can move your hips kind of side to side, just doing whatever feels good for you. And the stillness is what you need to be still. What I love to sometimes do in moments like this is find some cat cow breaths, just seated. So as you breathe in, roll your shoulders back, lift the heart, draw your tailbone back. And as you breathe out, round through the spine, chin to chest, tuck your tailbone down. And again, just moving in a way that feels good. Looking still if that feels good. Gonna do one last little bit of breath work. And then I guess we'll get on with our days. I miss you guys. <laughs> so with our breath work, just find a really comfortable position. Again, if seated doesn't feel good for you, you can grab a chair, you can lie on your back. Just whatever feels right for you right now is cool by me. Just notice your breath. And when you feel ready, you can go ahead and close down your eyes. We're going to move into, you've got two options. If it felt really good for you when we did this breathing with our hands on our outside or our ribs or side ribs earlier. And then find that again. If you want to place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, you can explore that again. So it's yoga's choice right now. But I want you to ideally have one or the other of those two options. So we can really focus on breathing a little bit more deeply, rather than just on the chest, not just shallow. If your hands are on your side body, on your ribs, and just breathing exactly as we did before, as so if every time we breathe in, our ribs are expanding outwards. Every time we breathe in, our ribs are contracting inwards. If our hands are on our belly and our heart, maybe we're breathing into the belly first and then into the chest at the top of the breath. And as we exhale, so our chest to fall and belly to fall. It's going to take three breaths, that's it. Whatever way feels good for you. Mm 
when you feel ready. Once again, go ahead and blink open your eyes. Let this morning sunshine filter back in through your vision. You can relax your arms, roll out your shoulders, shake out your head, whatever you feel like you need to do. And then just pause for a moment. Just notice how you are feeling. Notice what's going on for you physically. Notice what's going on for you mentally too. Give yourself thanks for showing up, for spending an hour of this beautiful day. It's moving, connecting back to yourself. So I wanted to take a moment and say thank you all of you so much for joining me. If anybody has any needs, don't hesitate to get back in touch. Send me a DM, send me an email, I'm here. <laughs> and if anybody wants to share with, with the group <laughs> how you're feeling, what's come up, even what's going on through you for you the rest of your day, let me know. I know on Instagram we have just over a minute remaining before this live ends. So if anybody wants to tune, tap in and kind of connect and let me know what's going on, please do. So I'm just gonna look through the comments and see how everybody is doing. Ah, uh, no worries, it's great to, for you to join us. Thank you so much for joining us, Shahid. And yeah. Oh, thank you, Jen. Thank you so much for joining. It was great to see you again. And yeah. <laughs> right? How did I live so long without breathing? I hear you. Breathing is one of those incredible things where you kind of do it consciously and unconsciously. But oh my God, when we breathe consciously, oh, right? Everything slows down. So yeah, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> ah, thank you so much, Susanna. This is great, thank you everybody. I'm going to check out now. Have an amazing day, everybody. I'm glad you all feel calm and good and goodbye. <laughs> that was um, Instagram just ending, which is why I said bye then. <laughs> but everybody who's still around on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me. It was amazing to connect with you all. Thank you so much for being here. If anybody has any needs, just drop me an email. It's Tali at Tali's, no, it's Tali at theyogatransformative.com. I think my link to my website should be on my YouTube. And if not, just Google The Yoga Transformative. Thank you, everybody. Have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves.